<laughs> Good evening and welcome to the Board of Health public hearing. Uh, this is for the implementation of the reduction in single-use plastic checkout bags, Board of Health Code Regulations Section 18. Um, the public hearing is televised. And following, Nadia will explain the purpose, order, and conduct for the hearing. The purpose is for the Board of Health to receive information upon which to base its decision from interested citizens and residents to ban the use of public checkout bags. The Board will hear comments from those in support or opposition, if any. After comments are voiced, the Board will address any concerns or questions if any, and will request for additional comments or questions that are not repetitive. The board will discuss as to the need of any additional information, if any. The board will announce its decision, if any. The chairman will request a motion to either continue or close the public hearing. Conduct for citizens and residents. Each person must identify oneself each person may speak only once in support or opposition. All comments and questions must be addressed to the Board of Health. If there are questions, they will be noted by the Board of Health who will determine those which it finds pertinent to the matter. The Board of Health Chairman may limit repetitive comments. The hearing is now open. Anyone who chooses to make a comment, please state their name. Residency and the comments. So, since we don't have anyone, we just have to wait. That okay. is part of the open pub public law, and we have to wait for it for uh, about 45 minutes. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> And while that, the camera is still rolling, FYI. Jonathan, there's some uh, paperwork if you like to oh. uh, pick up. Um, if you don't mind. I've also. never had this happen during a public hearing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And you may, uh, if you don't mind signing in, okay. that will be great also. Well, there's nobody else is here. Jim Kleinkoff from The Independent. Hi. What, uh, what prompted the, um, the idea to uh, restrict plastic bags? Well, actually, um, we started this initiative over a year ago. Uh, it was something that we sort of battered around and uh, thought it would be a great idea just because, you know, one of the things that Hopkinton is so well known for is our open space and our respect for nature and all that. And we just, you know, all the studies are all out there of how um, detrimental the plastic bags are to um, both our environment and also they're really damaging the stuff going on at Harvey as well. Harvey made it real clear that one of the things that's messing up the single stream recycling is all the plastic bags because people don't realize that you can't recycle them in single stream. So that was an issue. Um, so it was about a year ago that we were you know, talking about this and then our current director, Ed, um, retired. And so we had we were in search of a new director. And so all of our efforts went into firing. Uh, oh my goodness, firing. <laughs> that was terrible. Hiring Sean. That was a combination of finding yeah, right, right, and hiring. Right, right, right. Anyway, so um, yeah. And so then when Sean came on board, he just had so many wonderful ideas and started a, a bunch of new projects. and. Um, you know, getting him up to speed on everything, Nadia, that was really what she was working on. So we kind of tabled it for a while, and now that we're in a groove and um, things are really going well for us as a board, it was time to pick it up again. Um, and also, Sean, you can probably speak more to the percentage of communities in Massachusetts who have already adopted it. Right, right. 60, 69. Um, yeah, we're at uh, approximately 69 communities that have adopted it. Or 66 communities with uh, Needham um, pending, and um, given the fact that the state house is um, 
you know, it's, they've taken it under consideration. They've got, um, it's passed through joint committee and um, they're hopeful and optimistic that it's going to pass. Um, we thought it would be a, a good time as any to, uh, uh, to draft the regulations. And, and we're in the process of drafting and updating the regulations as they stand. So it, it did seem as the, probably the best opportunity that we had. Oh, you're to, talking about all of our to regulations? To do all of the regulations right. and uh, get them through this year. Any outreach to merchants as far as how it will affect them? We've spoken to um, we've spoken to many of the major retailers that would be affected, and their position in general has been that they're, they've they've all taken steps to prepare for um, bag laws in general because they're passing um, in what, in this region. I think we've got about six or seven communities immediately adjacent or within our region that have passed bag laws. So. They already have plans in place to um, replace the plastic bags. And um, so they, they seemed rather indifferent. Uh, they knew that it's coming. Um, and that um, for the most part, the question was, you know, would there be a, uh, like a, uh, the ability to draw down their bag supply, and we said you know, there was a provision in the bag law that would accommodate that. So, I yeah. think Framingham switched over what first of the year, right? Have you any idea in, how it's doing there? I, I live in Framingham, so you do okay. It's been going well. Uh, the uh, yeah, I mean, and even I think the only the only institution, all the only <clears throat> retail markets that were. Uh, I guess I, I wouldn't even say adversely impacted, but just weren't prepared, like the Home Depots and Lowe's, because um, they, they really hadn't thought that through. Uh, but the CVSs, um, they, were, they had all adopted uh, and adapted um, within a month or so of implementation, and uh, it seems to be going quite well. I know. I go to Walgreens and they, in uh, Framingham, and they switched over right away, as I remember. Yeah, and it's my understanding it hasn't been a problem um, with Stop and Shop either. And when you talk about a, a huge chain like that, but uh, Natick and Framingham both switched over right away. Nobody wants to have those fines. But I think if Stop and Shop was easy to adapt, I think uh, we shouldn't have a problem with Price Chopper. So it's in general, um, it's, it's, and as more and more data comes out, um, Especially with the, um, you know, the, the discovery of microplastics and bottled water and fish and, um, and other uh, food products, it's uh, people are getting on board. So um, that's it. Yeah, I think on on some levels we're sort of behind a lot of other communities as far as like uh, a lot of these ocean communities. So for example, um, my sister and brother-in-law live on Block Island and they have recently banned plastic straws and also balloons. They're not allowed to release balloons at weddings and stuff. So yeah, mm. uh, and well, the reason with that, they don't mind regular balloons, but helium filled balloons, they go up in the air and they land in the ocean. And my brother-in-law is actually a professional fisherman. So he said, yeah, they show up in my nets. Um, so, you know, something as simple as plastic bags, it's really a first step, I think, towards doing the right thing. So, drawdown and wasn't there also something we discussed about them being able to apply for um, an were, extension if they needed it? If they were adversely affected or... If, if they, they were, could prove that they were. Right. Um, you know, if it was a financial hardship to a small business. Right. So, uh, there might be a, the case possibly with smaller, smaller businesses, sure. And, um, and it, the, the bylaw, or the, the, not the bylaw, the regulation in general um, mirrors quite closely the, um, the state house law, so, or the state law, it's a law that's been proposed, so. Well, uh, 
and if we pass it, it's also one more uh, weight in the column of uh, being able to have it pass statewide without a lot more work. So the, it's a certain percentage of 75% <coughs> of towns. Well, they're, 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 the local representatives have said um, that there would come a time when and there would be a tipping point where if enough communities got on board, um, it would increase the likelihood that the state would adopt um, and the state regulators would adopt a vote um, for the uh, was it House Bill 2121. So. There is con some concern with that, however, though, as far as the, that the governor could decide to veto that, right? So that's sort of the nice thing about as a town, we have the authority to make the change. Um, and, you know, I think that that's something that we want to do regardless of what the state decides to do. Just curious, suppose in the next 30 minutes or whatever, no one shows up, how will that affect your decision? What would you assume from that? Well, I, do you want to speak to that or can I speak? Go ahead. Uh, my assumption, and I don't like to assume, but I've been on the board for a couple of years, and in my experience, if people care, they show up. Um, we have residents show up about all kinds of things. And so we thought this was a big issue. You see the number of chairs. So if no one shows up, that really says that the town is trusting us to make the decision for them, because we're very clear on that. Um, this was just an information gathering on our part in order to help us make the decision. It wasn't a public vote. It was a public hearing. So no one comes, then I assume it's up to us. All right. Sounds like a fair assumption. <laughs> We're one to assume. Yes. Jonathan, no questions? Hmm? You're normally full of questions. I, uh... You have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> bad for anyone who's watching it all. So. <laughs> Tom, it's not live. No, it's not live. Oh, oh it's so not? Oh, so no, you can edit live. it? Yeah, we can Photoshop some people in if you want. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Just pan the crown. Yeah. yeah. No, but I'm saying you only have to air um, when people are speaking. I, I don't know. Right. <laughs> I don't know what, what they're going to do. Well, I'm just glad it's not live. That's good. I mean, I'm, I'm sure they'll probably edit some of it down, but I don't know. <laughs> now, uh, let me ask this question. It can be edited out, obviously. If no one shows up in the next few minutes, can't we? I, I know we can't start the next one, mm -hmm. but. Is there a reason to keep this open? When yes. It's very clear, but we didn't yeah. give a time limit. Yes, we did. On oh, did we say it goes for 45 minutes? It, it, the next hearing starts at 6.45. So you're saying people will assume that they have the time? Yeah, we gave them uh, an hour. Okay. Yeah. But to your point, if they're not here by now. they would be stuck in traffic. Could be. We're stuck on the 19th hole. <clears throat> it was a beautiful day. Mm. You talk about where you all stand on the plastic bag? Well, it sort of goes without saying with me since I'm the one that started it. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've been in favor of it for a very long time. Lisa? I. I do support it. I think that it makes sense to do, and I think we did a good job doing due diligence with the businesses, particularly the smaller ones in town, reaching out to them, seeing how it's going to affect them. So, and, I mean, I spoke to both local and um, the uh, recycling center in Framingham, and how the reduction in bags was working to improve um, the. Um, 
their processing rates, they weren't having to slow down to remove bags as frequently as uh, they had been. And in general, um, you know, as, as, as I said, as more and more research comes out and they're finding uh, these mic uh, microplastics in the environment and in the, in the food we're eating, in water that we're drinking, uh, it's, be it's becoming more and more of an issue. Or a lot more questions being raised because we don't really know, you know, whether or how it's impacting, you know, our systems. Should make the boys at Harvey happy. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Especially considering the current situation with China. And, uh, yeah. I mean, they've opened up. Uh, they've opened up uh, trade routes and uh, with India right now, so they they do have product moving to India. Um, India so won't take as much, and yeah. they don't. You know, yeah. I don't think they pay as much either, which no, is discouraged. No. Right. But at, at least they're, uh, and then they do. They're, they have a six, six month window with the DEP. And then um, at that point, um, if they haven't identified uh, different sources, um, they can seek uh, relief from the DEP to uh, seek alternative methods, methods of um, you know, destruction, recycling, and or combustion of said product. So, um, but yeah, uh, this will go to help their cause. Yeah, actually what I hadn't realized um, was how many people didn't know that you couldn't put those in single stream recycling. So everyone's putting them in thinking they're do, doing the right thing, but really the only place you can recycle them is at the supermarket. Um, and so that's been a, a real problem because, I mean, even like I'm uh, devoted to recycling and I would catch my husband shoving all those stuff and chuck bags in there and I was like, you can't do that. The newer so, recycle bins, especially ones supplied by towns, usually say right on the top, you know, no plastic. Yep, they do. Yep, that no was plastic helpful. bags. Yep. yep, and that was good because we got those what six months ago. Yeah, right? we got all the new ones from Harvey. That was and it was a big investment yeah, for them, but it was definitely worth it because it's helping with them. You know, being able all the barrels can just be picked up, you know, by the machines too. So yeah, anything we can do to help them. <clears throat> On this, yeah. this particular one, we uh, this evening. Okay, and it wouldn't go into effect until next January. January two thousand nineteen. Yeah. And was that promised to the chamber, or was that um, just forgive me because I don't recall um, us picking that date. Oh, it says right here. All of the requirements of this regulation shall take effect on January 1, 2019. Okay. Because I know that at one point we had talked about 90 days and whatnot, but. So that's actually a very large window. That's yeah, a lot of time. time. So, all right. Sorry. Does this exist online in full? I can give it to you, I can send it over to you. That'd be great. I'll call you and give you my email. Sure. Thanks.
get any reaction from grocery stores about this? Yeah, they uh, said they uh, they they're in the process of de adopting or ad adapting to bag laws in all of their surrounding communities. Uh, I used to work for a, uh, a large oh. retail supermarket chain, and it um, it's a it's a it's a process that they have to go through. But um, in some ways, it's less of an expense on their end. They they don't have to buy bags, and it's something that they uh, they track quite. Uh, um, and it's a measure of performance for their de uh, for the front end departments on how many bags people are going through. So to remove that expense um, would actually help um, on their bottom line. Um, you know, there may be a trade off with uh, the paper bags, but uh, uh, but if more and more people are using. Uh, reusable bags, it, it helps the markets. Um, it, it really helps their bottom line because the, <clears throat> they're having, you know, fewer, uh, yeah, they're re we're reducing their expenses. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, yeah, it's just making it, it just makes it easier. Yeah. And Price Chopper, I mean, being our only grocery store, they have, other locations right. in towns that have done it. Right. So Most recently in Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury. Okay. And you were saying that, and we talked about this before, that they've just been able to adapt those carousels that they have. Right. And they're just replacing uh, product with uh, paper bags and or, um, and then increasing their uh, stock of uh, reusable bags. And that's, that's actually happened locally. I'd be interested to know how it's affecting Walmart that large. Yeah. I mean, they're all... I haven't been in. Yeah. No, I mean, actually, but Walmart. Uh, isn't there one in front of you? Yeah. Right there? Yeah. It's all, it's all paper. Mm -hmm. And um, it hasn't slowed down the, uh, the checkout speeds. Uh, so, like I said, I mean, it's... And they didn't um, add any fee, any charge to people? No. Okay. Because that was one of the concerns that I was getting from the side of that. I have had a little bit of opposition. Um, sorry, I can't talk about that in my mouth. Um, the only opposition I received to this was from the Association of Progressive, it's the Associated Progressive Bag Alliance. Um, and it's they represent the all the manufacturers mm -hmm. and recyclers and of course yeah I first when I first read it I was like seriously like to me that was like tobacco lobby but of course tobacco lobby is huge um, and so yeah he represents all of the companies that make and recycle the bags and he said hundreds of millions of dollars have gone into making these bags more recyclable and uh, you know for as sympathetic as I can be to you know any business that's going to lose money as a result of this it's not going to be because of Hopkinton you know I mean like the examples that he was using were in uh, big inner city situations like he said in DC it was met with a lot of oppositions um, because they you know they have so many people below the poverty line so I don't know if they uh, you know implemented it there with an extra charge you know you have to buy this paper bag or whatnot but um, so yeah, they said in, in big cities it's a problem. And you know, they said with the senior population and the poorer populations. <coughs> but we've actually discussed that as a board, how to address it with the senior population um, here in town. Do you wanna talk about what we're gonna be doing with that? Um, our, our goal is to provide um, bags um, free of charge to uh, seniors and, uh, and you need to help them with the costs. And uh, we're working on other programs to get additional um, stock in, uh, at the department so that we can provide, you know, others um, that might uh, that might need bags and be so. able to give some of those to to Cheryl Ann as well at Project Just Because, um, so that she can provide, you know, either cloth or the heavy duty plastic to people. Um, but 
what we had talked about was having like a little recycling program here at the senior center where so seniors can bring in all those plastic bags that they have you know jammed in a cupboard um, and that we will take on the responsibility of taking them to be recycled um, and if you turn in your plastic bags even if you don't um, that we'll have a, a you know a selection of bags here for them to take for their next grocery trip so just you know, I think it was in good faith just to show that we've really taken into consideration um, all of the subsets of population that it has adversely affected in other communities. So. This, this doesn't apply to restaurants and food shops that have takeout. Right, it does not. And that, that's pretty consistent across the state. And also, obviously, it doesn't apply to the bags that you get your produce in. That sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So, or dry cleaning. Hmm? Or dry cleaning. Oh, right. I didn't think of that. That's a whole other can of worms, stuff, like chemicals and stuff. Yeah, if there was something we could do about styrofoam, talk about takeout and stuff. Yeah. Oh, it's unbelievable. So would this apply like a gift shop? You know, uh, like a store that, not really a grocery store? Would it apply to them? They can't use plastic There bags. was a square footage. Is it? Uh, right? 3,000. Yeah. yeah, you have to have a certain square footage in order to um, fall under this. However, interestingly enough, most of our small gift shops, um, or even you know, takeout places like not takeout, but um, like Swoon or Bittersweet, you know, where they sell things that aren't just food. Like I think Bittersweet sells like mugs and stuff too, right? I don't think. Okay, and um, and they have always used paper. They just have. I mean, it's prettier. You know, they've just had nice paper bags. I mean, Hopkin and Drug has used paper for. I know that for as long as I can remember. So, yeah, the, the businesses that I was worried about it affecting, I think you know, they sort of were doing the right thing a long time ago without even having to be told. This also doesn't go through town meeting. You're no, it does not. You are yep. independent of Yes, we are. Maybe some people might not realize that. Maybe that's why they're not here. It's possible. Yep, that's interesting. Although, you know, I was thinking anyone who <coughs> might oppose it, you would think would be a business owner and not just, just but not just a, a you know, a resident. So I'm thinking anyone that had a financial interest in this would have come. You see what I'm saying? Because uh, I do. Yeah. Uh, what about the chamber? Have they weighed in or have you surveyed them? Yeah, they, they, we, I didn't have any negative feedback from them. Um, so. I take it that their response was sort of, they expected this. Yeah, it, it's, it, they they are they were anticipating it and that um, 
the uh, and they honestly thought that the uh, given the positive report out of committee um, that you know the state would be adopting it. So uh, most retail establishments um, were making uh, or taking steps to work towards it. Going towards paper or an alternative, and we should clarify that that was actually our first step in this. You know, we talked about it, and wouldn't it be nice if? And the first thing we did was let's talk to our businesses because you know that is the lifeblood of our community, and we're trying hard to get more businesses in town. So the last thing we want to do is seem unfriendly to to, to small business. So that was definitely uh, first and foremost on our list was making sure the chamber was on board. We have to go till 6.30 on this or 6.45? About five minutes before 6.45. Then we need you're, to close now it. Now you're making that up. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need to close it and then open right at 6.45. Should we have put something in there? I mean, I'm just saying, that, again, he'll edit this out, but I'm saying, like, should we have said it starts at 5.45 and in order to be heard, you have to be there by 6? No. Or I don't think you can. No. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Usually, people will assume it's going on until the next agenda item. Really? Um, okay. But planning, I mean, planning board doesn't put an end to the hearings, but um, they have the next agenda. Sometimes, you know, um, everything will be discussed and a vote taken prior to um, the next agenda item. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's usually kind of an open. Com com will do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we were to decide to do a vote at six thirty, that is that wrong? Or you're able to do that? Okay. Get, you know, because you know we're only just fifteen minutes away from the right. Next one. I'm just saying if you're not here by yeah. six thirty, this is not an issue you're concerned with. Right. The 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 only. Um, Concern is that if you do have an individual that comes in at 6:35, then that is something that will need to be addressed. <coughs> so that's why it's a little tricky. <laughs> I think it's a reasonable risk to take at 6:30. I think like people will argue that it is common reasonable. sense. Come in. At some point. No, I think it's a reasonable <laughs> risk to yeah. say let's at 6:30. And close the hearing, then we open the other one at 6 45. Yeah, if I think we need the eyes to read somebody dashing in here at 6 30 to uh, right. that's why I say I think it's a reasonable <laughs> risk. Yeah, um, and then if we need to reopen the hearing, we just yeah, we do. Yeah. All because right. I expect that we will have people for the next one. <laughs> That's what you she said. said optimistically. The next one being the uh, tobacco cigarette. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, cigarettes. Are you staying for that one? I've got to get to the planning board. They've got a full agenda tonight, and they start at seven. So. Oh, okay. I actually thought. From a news standpoint, that this would be a more newsworthy um, topic than raising the. Uh, I thought so too. I thought raising the tobacco age was going to be like, oh yeah, finally just do it, you know, and that bags would create a as conversation. As far as a consumer is concerned, I mean, if they ask me paper or plastic, I always say paper anyway. It's of more course. convenient. Yep, mm -hmm. me too. Definitely. Yeah, and then we tend to use them, do we burn them? Mm -hmm. Paper mm -hmm. bags. That's what we do. Yeah. Good kindling with some yeah. soft wood. Yeah. Definitely. I use them for my recycling now. 
Oh, totally. Yes, we use them for recycling. We use them to start fires. Much to my kids' dismay, sometimes I make them bring their gym clothes in them. <laughs> well, in our case, it's either that or a scrub it up bag. So. Sometimes they'll take the paper over that. So if this passes, is there going to be people actively checking if stores are complying? Yes. It's, it's part of the... I mean, we're inspecting the grocery or grocery and retail stores that sell food anyways. Um, so it's up to the Board of Health to uh, verify that they are, uh, that it's been enacted. So we'll be going through stores uh, during normal inspections. Um, if they're not in compliance, um, is it, you know, we have the ability to issue civil fines and, um, and there's a structure within the, uh, the regulation. Right. To address that, um, and then if they, again, if they do have an issue, they can uh, seek one of the um, the variances to seek uh, relief, um, and then they can approach. They can come to the department, obtain a, a, a request to meet before the board, uh, provide their case. The board will hear it, and we can make a decision on you know, whether or not to issue. The, uh, the variance and um, address uh, the time period for that variance uh, to be implemented. And basically, we're talking price chopper and CVS. Really? Yeah. You know, really going to have to hire a team of inspectors to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, this is. I mean, then you look at Cumberland Farms or uh, Honey mm. Farms, Cumberland Farms, you know, but. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, any chain operation. Right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. But the flip side of that is the benefit to being a chain is you've probably dealt with this already in mm -hmm. another community where you are, you're already doing business. So, Now, Sean, just to clarify, um, you know, we have the fines, 100, 200, 300. Those have to be um, seen by one of our inspectors directly. Right. So you, Amanda, Brian. Right, and um, or someone that uh, we dedicate our uh, Right. to uh, make any sense. Could a resident call us and say, I was just a price chopper and I got a plastic bag? Right, and then we would- That's a no. Us. If a resident contacted us, have uh, to go we'd have to right. evaluate the complaint anyways. Right, okay. Uh, within 24 hours. All right. And then uh, each day the violation exists is deemed as a separate offense. So say it's their third offense, um, and then they haven't rectified it within 24 hours. Do they get another $300 fine, or they, is it $100 would, per would, day? They would. One would assume that after the first offense, they would come and approach us for a variance, and then. Because obviously they well, they're having a problem right. complying. Okay. Not to put you on the spot. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure I understood it completely. So. Uh, okay. So it's. I mean, they. Most of them have that have already been preparing for this. Um, uh, so it's really, uh, and then with the town, with so few, uh, I wanted to express that. <laughs> no, I'm really impressed with how many people just uh, keep a stash of bags in their trunk, you know, and go, and you know, when they walk into a supermarket, they have their bags with them already, so. Um, like, I don't know if you guys have ever shopped at, well, you know, live here, but Aldi, um, you know, because Aldi doesn't have bags. And uh, I've gone there before without a bag in my trunk. <laughs> you try to carry stuff up. Well, I mean, BJ's is the same way. You go there, yes. they don't give you bags. Yep. Or, uh, who is it? Um, Karen. Karen's a good one to speak to uh, about how, you know, the EU, mm -hmm. or just Ireland specifically, mm -hmm. There's no, you know, it's how they did it countrywide. They had a, a six month period. You knew at, you know, that date, um, you're going to be able to buy bags. And then, um, and now they're just sold as a, uh, an item on the retail shelf in case you damage your bag. Um, so it's just another That's section great. within the market. And, uh, and he said it took about six months to change the behavior and the expectation. Do they offer recyclable paper, or you have to bring the, no, those bags? They, 
for the most part. He was saying that in most communities, everybody's got their their own bag. Nice. So. I can tell you, O'Hare, if you want a bag, it's 15 cents. Oh, for like if you're just buying something in a gift shop? Well, or yeah, if you're like, you know. Nice. I saw that the other day. That's the way Chicago's done it, which is, I think, the socioeconomic disadvantage piece that some mm. of the inner mm -hmm. city people have yep. done. I mean, not so much O'Hare, but if you go into downtown Chicago. Well, I'm sorry that you won't be able to stay for the next one, but I'm sure we can tell you how it turns out. Yeah, fun at planning board. I will uh, I'll call. <laughs> what? I just feel badly for our audience. This is my first one. <laughs> Enjoy it. <laughs> Enjoy it. Enjoy <laughs> it. Yeah, I've heard planning board can get pretty <laughs> heated. Concom too? Less so lately, but mm -hmm. yeah. But in years past there's been some challenging issues there. Yeah, actually that's true. But much less so lately. Yeah, and planning board was the opposite. Planning yeah, board. Planning board is always... a piece of cake. Yeah. No, but now it's switched. Yeah, I don't know that I would run the planning board. I think planning board is a lot of work. It seems like a lot of work. It should be. It should be. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, absolutely. It should be. <laughs> Especially Sometimes at, it isn't. Lately, at this point in <laughs> our town's growth, yeah, it's yeah. a it's a big deal. Yeah, in the last 10, 15 years. Yeah, it's a big deal. So it's 627. You willing to take the risk? <laughs> oh, you are a risk taker. <laughs> I'm going to wait till 630. All right. Is that okay? No. For some reason, that feels like a good. This one? That's fine. Four <coughs> minutes. <laughs> I mean, and it is clearly written in the. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I missed that. So technically, if the state goes forward with it, it's only seven months later. Yep. It's eight months later, yep. yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> no. Okay, so it is officially six thirty. Mm -hmm. We have given forty five minutes to this hearing, and I motion to close the hearing for a vote. Do I have a second? Second. All right. What? No, I said all right. Motion to approve the regulation. Oh, well, that would be the second. So I'll move to approve the regulation as written. Thank yes. You. Second. Okay. So there we have it. There we it's have done. it. It's done. It's done. The motion passes. Did you vote? Yes. yes. Well, if we move and second. <laughs> yes. Really. Thank you for Although your patience. I suppose you could. 
make a motion and not support it. But That's right. So yes, I approve. Absolutely. Thank you. 645. Good evening and welcome to the Board of Health public hearing for the amended definition insertion of smoking and tobacco products, definition of non-tobacco nicotine delivery products, and the tobacco age increase. Basically what we're doing is we're looking to raise, raise the uh, age to purchase tobacco and all tobacco products and non-tobacco uh, e-cigarettes and that sort of thing, all of that from 18 to 21. So the language is a little bit convoluted, but basically we're also amending the language to include all the vaping things that haven't been in there you know, previously. Um, so anyways, as you can see, this hearing is televised and Nadia is going to share with us the purpose, order, and conduct for this hearing. The purpose is for the Board of Health to receive information upon which to base its decision from interested citizens and residents to ban the use. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, it's been a long day. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, she, yep, I'm sorry. Yep. Here, it's yep. Yep. There's yep. two of the same. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. The purpose is for the Board of Health to receive information upon which to base this decision from interested citizens and residents uh, to the amended definition insertion of smoking and tobacco products, definitions of non-tobacco nicotine delivery products, and the tobacco age increase. The board will hear comments from those in support or opposition, if any. After comments are voiced, the board will address any concerns or questions, if any, and will request for additional comments or questions that are not repetitive. The board will discuss as to the need of any additional information, if any. The board will announce its decision, if any. The chairman will request a motion to either continue or close the public hearing. The following is the conduct of citizens and residents. Each person must identify oneself. Each person may speak only once in support or opposition. All comments and questions must be addressed to the Board of Health. If there are questions, they will be noted by the Board of Health, who will determine those which it finds pertinent to the matter. The Board of Health Chairman may limit repetitive comments. So now that the hearing is open, the first person may address the Board, stating the name, and either in support or opposition of the hearing. Sullivan. I am 11 years old and I go to Hopkins School in Hopkins. I am in fifth grade and moved from Connecticut in August 2016. Last year in my fourth grade health class, I learned that Hopkins is not in the tobacco 21 list. After that class, I came home and went and wrote a letter to our town and selectmen asking for support of getting Hopkins on the tobacco 21 list. As you may know, the selectmen invited me to their meeting. I shared my letter there. They supported looking into making this happen. As follow-up shared, the Board of Health is the place to start. I am here today because I believe that is important to our town. Tobacco is not good for your health and other people's health. I learned that kids who start smoking at a very young age do stick with it. and. I think that we should all be 21 and older to buy tobacco, but hope that no one will ever buy, want to buy tobacco and make people's health at risk from smoking. It could make anyone sick and get lung cancer. Please help thinking get on the Tobacco 21 list, and please try getting this law passed in Hopkinton. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Logan. Thank you. That was extremely well written, and I appreciate your input tremendously. Thanks. Wouldn't it be great if we could just ban the sale of it altogether, huh? <laughs> but yes, raising it to 21, I, I, I have read a lot of those studies as well, Logan, starting young, um, 
definitely makes the possibility of addiction a lot worse. So thank you very much. I'm so glad that, and to have your teacher here with you is just wonderful. Excellent, thank you. Does anyone else have any comments or questions? No? And that's the problem with things like this, is that we do have to keep it open for a while, so we can get very quiet for a while now. And we still are on camera. Yes, we yeah. are. So you're su we're supporting getting it on the list for Hopkinton, but then we also we want to support getting it into having it be a state law. Right. Absolutely, absolutely. And so what we are voting on tonight is raising the age in Hopkinton. Um, so a couple of years ago, when I ran for the board, it was something that came up in uh, the debates um, and the you know your candidate night and whatnot. And they asked me my opinion on it at the time. And so I am quoted uh, in the newspaper, as Jonathan knows, as saying that I didn't support it back then. And the reason why I didn't support it at the time is because of all of our local businesses and I didn't I thought that if we raise the age that the, the difference between 18 and 21 wasn't that great and if we raise the age it was just going to hurt local businesses because people were just going to go to the next town over they're going to go to Ashland and Holliston and Westboro and you know, it just didn't make sense to me I thought if kids want to get them they're going to get them right what has happened in the interim and having you know two teenagers myself I see this and it's not so much the cigarettes as it is the the e-cigarettes it's the jeweling um, it's become a massive problem and every town around us with the exception of Milford all of our other neighboring towns have all gone to 21 so what has happened Hopkinton is now the place to go everyone knows go to mobile in Hopkinton on 85 it's right off the highway they're gonna sell to you if you're underage so as soon as I heard that as a parent of two teenagers um, and since it's 18 and so many of the high school kids are 18 you actually have this whole secondary market going on at the high school now where you have seniors buying up the stock at you know at the local gas station and selling them to other kids in the high school um, and so by raising it to 21 you take away I guess back then I just looked at it like what's oh, a couple of years it's massive if you can take away that 18, you take away an entire an entire subculture um, that's that's doing this. And so, really, what you do is you eliminate, you know, this whole secondary market that's going on right under our noses in our schools. I mean, it's really kind of amazing what's happening. So, um, so that's why I changed my opinion on it. Um, and I know that we are both in favor of it at this point. Um, the reason for the public hearing is that we were obviously open to hearing. Um, people's opinions who are against it um, oh, and in favor of it yeah and I do right. think the two things here what was missing in our law was anything around vaping or e-cigarettes yes. it was only old tobacco transmission so we've amended not only did, is the age raised from 18 to 21 but the regulation is amended <coughs> to include those non-tobacco products mm -hmm. so it's a twofer and even though all the retailers have been treating it as such, you know, they've been asking for ID, you know, the way they would for tobacco, I think just changing the age um, for, for everything across the board and making that be a part of the legislation, having it say um, that e-cigarettes are tobacco, are, that changes the perception in the eyes of the kids. Because I think what I'm hearing a lot from my high school kids' friends is oh, it's not smoking. Smoking's so bad. This is nothing, you know. Um, and actually, I was at a doctor's appointment with my son today, and the doctor asked him point blank, you know, have you ever tried this? And he said no. And but he admitted that some of his friends had. And she said, I'm going to tell you this. And she's a neurologist, and she said, don't ever do this. She said, don't start it, no matter what. Um, because she said there's you know, it's like twice the nicotine delivery um, and just way more addictive and she had all sorts of facts and figures and I was like can you come to my meeting tonight <laughs> so um, yeah so I, I think that this is um, I'm, I'm glad that we're finally having this discussion mm -hmm. and, and regardless of 
what is decided here, although this is something that doesn't have to go to town meeting, it is something that we as a board, you know, will make the decision on tonight. Um, regardless, that the, it is going to be a statewide law, um, but that's not happening until August uh, 2019. No, that's plastic right? bags. Yep, but no, they've already said. It, it's, it's just like plastic bags where they, they've accepted it's gone into committee. And okay. Just, and we've, we have a significantly larger proportion of communities that have elected to go um, Tobacco 21. It's, there are how many are there? 169. So the, which is, uh, there are 351 communities in Massachusetts, 169 have already gone 21, mm -hmm. which is good. Yeah. 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 So we just need a few more. This yeah. goes, it goes a long way to increasing awareness, to increasing the perception of perceived risk and associating vaping with tobacco to um, enhance that uh, perception of perceived risk. And then, um, and it does add um, a hurdle um, to access, which should mm -hmm. help, um, which should help reduce the incidence of vaping mm -hmm. uh, in the community. Yeah. I thought one of the most interesting statistics she came up with was in Needham, when they passed this, the rate dropped by half. Right. Um, was that vaping or? That, um, tobacco use. Tobacco use. 21, raising it to 21, um, a reduction in smoking rate from 13% to 6.7%. I believe they is, still maintain the lowest. Which is pretty amazing. Yeah. The lowest rate of per, yeah, uh, tobacco in use in Metro It was in 05. They did that a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and then the thought is, is that if we can get, if all of the Metro West communities are on board, it just makes it, um, an even greater hurdle uh, to access. Yeah. And, uh, and that's what we're really going to do, is, as you said, um, mm -hmm. to eliminate, um, you know, if, if you stop, or if you don't start by the time you're 21, I think you have a, there's a 10% chance that you might start after 21. Yeah. Um, but and, uh, but, uh, and then, you know, studies have shown that it'll have roughly a 2% impact on uh, local businesses. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the reward far out, you know, weighs the risk yeah. uh, represented. It's also interesting, our local liquor stores supported the age increase because it makes life easier for yeah. them. Mm -hmm. They're only carding for one age. Uh, that's true. Yeah. 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 And they don't have to that was something you look at their chart. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, um, so in general, this um, there was support in the community for it. Um, there's a lot more programming coming your way. Um, <laughs> there so, is, yeah. Um, so, and there'll be a there'll be a program on May 21st. I think it at is the, the 21st. high school yep. um, on vaping and tobacco use. Mm -hmm. Uh, open to the public. It, it's interesting. I just had a discussion with my college roommate who has teenagers, and her son, being 14, was exposed to vaping. Yep. And at such a young age, and you know, he stood strong against it's all illegal, and he would never want to pursue that. And she says it's 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 everywhere. It is. Everywhere. It's everywhere. So it it brought you know to my attention of, you know, it was more cigarettes in the our, our older oh, days, right. yeah, yeah. but this whole new trend and, and very scary um, to well, see that, that exposure so it, young. It doesn't smell, it doesn't set off smoke detectors. Um, yeah, it's amazing. But it's small, it's so small, but so small. Yeah. yeah. Now what they've enacted at the high school is if you're caught with anything, um, even just a pod or just a charger, so it doesn't have to be the whole unit, you can just caught with any paraphernalia whatsoever and you're, you get the suspension and whatnot, and they're actually rewriting the regulations in uh, the student handbook, which uh, it's going to uh, make the penalties much greater for kids that get caught with it. Absolutely. And there's also a, uh, there's an intervention component where um, in lieu of suspension, you have an opportunity to go into a three-day program uh, where you learn about uh, the equipment, the health risks 
and the tight coping mechanisms. Um, and that upon successful completion of the program, um, you can avoid suspension. Um, so what we're trying to do is, again, increase awareness um, within, you know, it'll be in both starting in the high school, moving down in the middle school. Um, but we think with, uh, and we believe with that, um, increased perception that we'll be able to drastically reduce uh, the incidence of uh, tobacco or just all tobacco use. And additionally, Sean, didn't you say that um, kids, even kids who aren't in violation, can do the right. three-day course, um, you know, as like a um, like a community service or, you know, just something to, mm -hmm. because, you know, kids are starting to build their college resumes and whatnot, so yeah, some kids might just yeah. take an interest in just taking it, mm -hmm. which is great. So, I mean, if you're, if you're seeking it to go to school for public health, you know, it's, a, it's a class that would be offered. So, it's, so who puts that on? Um, it'll be a joint. Right now, it's starting as a joint. Um, uh, it's a joint curriculum brought between Genesis um, out of Framingham and um, the wellness educators um, at the high school, mm -hmm. and um, and then that'll it'll it'll be discussed in full on uh, the twenty first, and um, it's it's, a, it's gonna be quite a, an interesting, exciting program. And uh, <coughs> so I, uh, bless you. we sought grant funding to carry it through. Uh, for another year, and then uh, with the hopes that um, we'll build curriculums around it for the wellness uh, programs, and uh, it'll become a you know a future part of the curriculum. Then they'll incorporate not only tobacco but electronic cigarettes and the risks posed by both. We can send you the information if you want to attend. I would be interested. In yeah, that. I mean, I think that all the wellness teachers in all grade levels just should check it out because yeah. this is the first time that you know that the Board of Health has attempted something like this. And I was going to say, uh, yeah, I think it's going in the Huffington Independent. Yes. This. The next Independent that comes out, yeah. it'll be in there. But. So, um, but yeah, right now it's targeted at high school and, and uh, parents and, you know, mm -hmm. can all Definitely. go, but, you know. Because that's half the problem is that, you know, with the jewels, yeah. no one, uh, you know, they just look at them and they think they're a hard drive. Hard right. Hard drive. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they're so easy to conceal. Um, but, uh, so, so some of that's obviously targeting the high school age, but the middle school programming, will, yeah, they, they will it'll be built into all. Right. Yeah. Uh, there, there have been instances um, in the, I think more so in the middle school bus. Um, I think there was at least once. Well, know, because they instance. share a bus with the so, um, oh, same bus. But yeah, well, and, and what we're looking to do is, <clears throat> again, if we're increasing the awareness, starting with the high school kids, then moving down on the middle school, the thought is that we can, and, and as we incorporate it into uh, the curriculums of both schools, we should see and continue to see a decrease in uh, usage. So that's yeah. And also, I mean, think about it. I mean, like I said, the 18-year-olds, if they're able to buy and they supply it, they're supplying it to underclassmen, yes. and they're supplying it to their younger siblings. Yeah. And so that's how my 14-year-old mm -hmm. found out about it, was because he has friends who have, you know, older brothers and sisters who are doing it. And, you know, it's just, and it's not, there's no stigma attached to it. If any one of them ever lit up a cigarette, it would just be, yeah. they'd be a pariah. But jewels are cool. It's it's something we really need to, to right. hammer hard right now. So and when would this, how long would it take for this age increase if it did pass tonight? Uh, the first of the year, right? Or can we make we it were sooner? Yeah. We're tentatively hoping uh, to send the location come July 1st. So July 1st. Mm -hmm. July okay. 1st would be our target. Okay. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> would be. Okay. This would affect, this would have, a, have an impact on fifth graders now when they move up. Right. It really would because of the access to it. Yes. It's trickling down to the middle school. So by the time they get into, they're going next year. 
That's right, because sixth grade is maths. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's a good. really good point. That's so a very good point. these guys in August will be in the middle school. Yeah. So look okay. at Logan's not here right now, but pat himself on the back for making a difference. Yeah, he he yeah. really stood by wanting to speak out. It's so great. We're proud of him. I'm yeah. so glad he did. Yeah. It's great. And he was inspired by you. Wow. So that's great. There's a lot. It says a lot for lessons that are taught that resonate, and, and, and that one did, you know, that made a difference. When you, you know, when you learn, you know, health, you know, your lungs are a filter. So what are you exposing, you know, the tissue in your lungs to? Yeah. Um, it's nicotine and, a comp you know, a host of other compounds. And if you if you watch what how industry is now responding to you know the effects of um, some of those uh, chemicals, especially diacetyls in lock in uh, industrial settings, um, you know they're now wearing respirators, and it's uh, so it's, it's and the studies are now just kicking in, and we're starting to get more and more data. You talking about the studies surrounding vaping? The vaping? Okay. So, and that's what I keep preaching to my teens is they just haven't been around long enough to have enough research for us to even really know. Um, you know, you hear about the, the people in the popcorn plants, you know, popcorn lung. They had no idea that that was happening to them. Um, you know, they have emphysema and just horrible effects. So it's, yeah, it's this will go a long way really, to help it. And you as a health teacher, I was just thinking like, isn't the whole thing that, um, what, you, you, your brain isn't fully formed until you're 25? Yeah, it's, it's, late, it's later into your 20s. Yeah. Yes. And so, but this is like the most volatile age for them is, is through puberty. Yes. Right? So, yeah. Thank you, Logan. <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. It's really That's incredible. Good. All, yeah. I, we've, it's been the talk of the school. All of my classes have been wondering about this because we're still learning about it this year again. And I have them go on and with their Chromebooks, they research, they find out is to, is Hopkinton on the list, and and they see that it's not. And then I say at the end of that lesson, I was saying, well, there was a student last year who <laughs> wrote a letter, and and it was just this recently that I was teaching about it and so it was perfect because then this all came up so yeah. they're so you all can show them this. I will they're all wondering what's happening and it's also going to be on TV so Logan you can tell your friends to watch <laughs> you on right? HCAM yeah you don't care before right? <laughs> he was on TV oh for select oh for select of course oh, that's so great that was, that was really that's great experience too yep. so HCAM is wonderful to have <laughs> yes, yeah. they are. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, as, as Logan shared, we're, we moved here in August of 16. We're from Connecticut. Okay. So being in the town of Hopkinton and the smallness of the town and there's the education here is amazing and all these little extra features of like the, the town TV and is, 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 is really nice. So. Yeah. It was a good town pick, definitely. Oh, absolutely. For me too. Yes. <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah. Yep. Lisa and I have both lived in town for a very long. How long have you been here? Twenty-five years. Wow. Now. I've been here You've nineteen. Seen a lot so <laughs> yeah, and um, there were three traffic lights when I was here. And yeah, we've never regretted the decision to move here. It's a really wonderful community. Yeah. Very very lucky. And it only took thirty-five minutes or forty minutes to drive to Boston back then. <laughs> 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 The yeah. <laughs> Life has changed. Life has changed. What part of Connecticut? Um, we, I grew up in Stratford, Connecticut, and our home was in Shelton, Connecticut. So, Not familiar. And then I, I Massachusetts was was a strong pick for us. I went to college at Stonehill. Oh, All right. Um, I grew so. up in East. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then I used to work for GE. Well, I did. I consulted for GE. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, we're not that far from Fairfield. So, yeah, I know where Shelton ends up. Oh, you're from Fairfield, Connecticut? No, no, no it's oh. the, the town of Shelton's, you know, it's close to Fair, Fair, Fairfield. Oh, okay. Fairfield, yeah. just to kind of give a place. Sort of yeah. Oh, all right. Cool.
Okay. Now, I have family from Torrington. So okay. Isn't that kind of close? Yeah, yeah. Sort of. I grew up in Derby, Connecticut. Okay. So yeah. I, I was a coxswain for years. Oh, were you? Yeah. Okay. You were, I'm sorry, were you there? I, I was a coxswain. Right. Coxswain. So they have the, uh, and what the, what is it, not the head of the Connecticut, uh, the Derby? The Derby Sprints? Oh. oh there's a, there are a slew of rowing events there. Okay. The Derby. Yeah, I grew up there and out there for a while, but yeah, the parents were they were there for three something years, and longer. I used to work for the Ameses. <laughs> so, oh, really? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I later consulted for them. So. Yeah, the Ames family is the Stonehill yeah. found, founders, right? right? But it's, yeah. it's the old. It's the second. It was the second uh, compound. Uh, yeah. And then instead of putting the airport there, they uh, decided to build the college. Yes. I brought you to, I brought you to Hopkin, or Massachusetts. I, uh, I, we I we hired him last yeah. August right. as the director of yeah. health here. Uh -huh. so, and I, I'd been an environmental consultant, and uh, I'd, uh, I was a sanitarian for the city of Boston. And, uh, so you moved from Easton to Hopkin? I went Easton. Amherst, oh, okay. Boston, and then I ended up moving to Framingham and here. Mm -hmm. and I, uh, did some work for the EMC and the Cruth, uh, Cruth Capital, their, uh, their real estate trust. So I uh, got done work in town and mm -hmm. it was a, I knew a lot about the town. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yes. I don't have anything else to say, but <laughs> I'm sorry. I'd love to be interesting and riveting, but no, I'm just, I, I, I don't, I mean, I know we have to keep this, so we, the hearing technically, what we said, 745? But you don't have to stay. We, if other people well, this one we want to end at 730. Why we ended the last one at 630. I think it, Okay. But you don't have to wait. We, oh, okay. we could, uh, just sort of, you know. Yeah. Um, we can't vote until we close the hearing, okay. the public comments, and we cannot, we run the risk if we close the public comment before the hearing is technically closed. If someone comes in, we'd need to reopen the public hearing. So, but we certainly, I mean, we certainly understand that sitting in a auditorium for a half an hour while we wait for this, but we can, we, we will let you know the result if you don't want to just I will email you as soon as we do it. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Does that sound I'm going to yeah. go do some homework. I figured that <laughs> might be. Great idea. Excellent. <laughs> thank you all for coming. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very, for having us. Thank, thank you. Nice to meet you all. Nice oh, to meet you too. as well. Yeah, thank great. you so thank much. Nice. Lisa Whittemore. Nice thank to meet you. you. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome to Huffington. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thanks again, Logan. Thanks, Logan. Thanks, Abigail. Thanks, Abigail. Go get that homework done. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. How are they doing? Uh, tied still. Oh. Zero, zero. All right. So I think we've heard from everyone that we're going to hear from. It is 741, and I motion to close the discussion. Second. Excellent. And are we ready to have a vote? I am. So I move to approve the, is it a bylaw or a regulation? I'm regulation. regulation. Approve the regulation um, as amended and rewritten to include non-tobacco products and raising the age to 21, mm -hmm. um, effective July 1, 2018. I second that. 
Fantastic. Aye. Aye. Excellent. Wonderful. Thank you. So then do you need a motion to close? Yes, please. I move to close the public hearing. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. We are done.